Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Nightdale and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Unfortunately, it seems like we've had a bit of an accident off in the distance over there. Valentina accidentally crashed one of the F-18s that we had for training off in the, near the mountain. So we're going to have to find an airplane or grab an airplane that's going to be able to sh land and take off in a very short distance to go and rescue her. So, this thing might do. This is a uh, C-23 Sherpa. Is it a C-23? Well, it doesn't matter. This aircraft is going to be bringing us to Valentina Kerman and picking her up, and we're going to bring her home with this aircraft. Now, this aircraft is special for the sole reason that it can take off and land in a very short distance. So, as we get ready... And out of time warp, we are now approaching our landing zone. Valentina Kerman is right there. So, with this mountain in the way, it's going to actually cause some problems for us. We're going to try to making a short as we can landing, and we're going to use everything on this aircraft in our favor. Now these are two uh, two Weasley engines powering this aircraft with Z clipping. I don't know why that's happening. We're going to make a quick turnaround, bring down our landing gear, shut off our engines. Knife edge our way here. Activate our engines again. Give us a little bit more airspeed. We have our landing lights showing us where everything is. Toggle the slats and the flaps. Air brakes. Coming in slow as we can. And touchdown, bringing around the aircraft at a s very quick uh, snap turn right there. And we're going to pick up Valentina Kerman just by rolling deep here. <laughs> there we are. I didn't activate the reverse thrusters on this one, I sh actually should have. So we're going to pick up Val with the Sherpa here. She can... No. Oh, damn. <laughs> I didn't bring a ladder, did I? Oh. Damn. Well, at least we could open this up. Run up inside! <laughs> Arm that. Fine. Fine. Please climb. Oh, jeez. Alright. Uh, jump cut right real quick. Alright, validated the aircraft. <laughs> uh, don't, don't ask how I got that to work. But, uh, essentially, we're now going to figure out how we're going to take off from this area, which isn't really flat by any of the stretch of the imagination, but, uh, I'm gonna try to take off, not pointing towards these mountains. Verts are, uh, slats in our flaps here. And now reactivate them. And have a 
slower takeoff speed than we originally did. And pull up our slats and our flaps. Barely being able to hang on to the air. Come on, bite into the air, please. And rescue mission basically accomplished until we get back to KSC. Which is where? That way. So uh, you might be asking, oh god, that's a that's a that's a hill right there. You might be asking, uh, how is this going to be used in Minecraft when I'm building a couple space program? Essentially, if you ever want to build an aircraft and you need to take off like immediately with a snap of your fingers, you could just add flaps and or slats, and it'll just make your aircraft uh, take off a, li a little bit quicker. If you need an example of, uh, if this is actually used in the real world, bush planes, for one, use flaps. We could, uh, you know, take a look at the, uh, experimental, uh, Piper Cubs, uh, any of the stall planes, really. Um, and even on modern planes, for one, the 747s, the 737s, Airbuses, they all have flaps, and a few air, and a bunch of the, uh, passenger jet, jet liners actually have slats. Now, the actual function of the slats is a bit off in Couple Space Program. Because for here, they go down. In the real world, they extend forward, then point downwards while actually, you know, deploying like that. And that's actually uh, extending the wing surface a little bit more so it can create a tad bit more lift just to uh you know keep floating on the air essentially every aircraft is designed to be a glider every aircraft is supposed to float in the air so essentially by creating a little bit more wing surface you do increase your drag quite substantially however you uh make it so that you can stay in the air a little bit longer, and just slow down just enough so when you actually do land, you don't bounce all over the place. Alright, we're coming in for a landing now on the, uh, KSC runway. We're getting a little bit of mock effects when you're not really supposed to. You know, for a straight-winged aircraft. <laughs> uh, we use these, my guy. Anyway, as we're coming in for the landing, we're gonna shut down the engines. Slow down just a tad bit. Toggle landing gear. Starting to become a little bit twilight here. Toggle slats in the flaps. As you can see, the aircraft is just wants to float in the air. Gotta keep up our airspeed or we'll actually fall out of the sky. And if we just, you know, pull up the nose a little bit, we could just float for a little bit and then just touch down gently and just land. So we land, we touched down about right about here. And uh, we took about, mm, four or five links of the aircraft to actually slow down to a complete stop. Now if I actually had the reverse thrusters, we could probably, you know, stop in half that distance, but hey, that's what stall planes, uh, you know, that's how they do. Now I'm going to show you guys an extreme example. Okay, as an extreme example of this aircraft, we're going to be, or using, st oh. As you're seeing an extreme example of stall aircraft, I'm gonna toggle this, throttle up. Now this aircraft usually, when it doesn't have the flaps or slats activated, has a takeoff speed of about 40 meters per second. Now, if I activate them, um, three, two, one, now, we have a takeoff speed of about 30. Now this aircraft does not have, uh, no, the best aerodynamics. 
And this is actually based off of a uh, stall plane that was built in Russia called the Wilga. If you ever take a look at it, it's a very strange looking aircraft because the landing gear is actually bent backwards. And that was actually the first plane I've ever flown in and actually flew. So, as the example I'm about to show you guys here of what stall planes are capable of, I'm going to make an attempt to land on top of the VAB with no VTOL and just stall capabilities. So, I float my way over. I came a little bit too high. Uh, there we are! <laughs> uh, touch and go! Touch and go, please! Uh, come on! Come on, 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 come <laughs> on! There we are. <laughs> well, uh, example, uh, we almost landed, and, uh, oh, jeez. Alright, we're gonna, we're gonna do that, uh, around two on that one, so, uh... If we crash, it's fine, but... Nonetheless, it, it, sh it it's the example, uh, that I'm trying to put forward that, yes, this does work. <laughs> to a degree. To, to, yes, a degree. Uh, coming around here again. The... Jeez. And we came in a little bit too high, doesn't matter. Because we're about to float right over it again. Use up all the drag, all the drag. Too much, too much, okay right by again. So we're gonna do this third time. Third time's a charm. Jeez. Come on. Come on. Come on. Lift! <laughs> Lift! Alright. Alright. Third time's a charm. We can do this. Third time's a charm. Now, what I actually can do is this. Activate it while the engines are running. And then deactivate the engines just enough! Oh shit. <laughs> well. Stall the aircraft, please. I think that was a landing. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, so yeah, just use uh, stall in your aircraft and you can actually land in... the fuck is going on here, my guy? Hombre. My guy. Uh, it's possessed. So yeah, just use stall on your aircraft and uh, you'll be able to land in places that you never thought you would. So uh, actually, if you could, you know, link me a video of you actually attempting to stall an aircraft on top of the VAB and like an airplane like this and uh, I don't know, have uh, bragging rights I guess? Anyway, I thank you guys for watching, I will see you all next time. Goodbye!